Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning, and Marine. In this video, I want to discuss a special topic, which is uh, how to convert a uh, car or truck uh, engine, a small block Chevrolet engine or a, the, the 4.3 V6, into a boat engine. So, there are differences, and uh, I'm going to talk about the pitfalls and what you need to watch out for when you're trying to take a car or truck engine and make it into a marine engine. So, this engine is actually a marine engine. You can tell because it's got the Mercruiser serial number tag on the side of it. It's a uh, 4.3 liter V6 and it's a, a prior, it's an engine pre-1996. It's I know it's before 1996. And the reason I know that is because even though it had a plastic, even though the uh, valve cover said Vortec V6, this is not a real Vortec engine. And the reason I know that is because the Vortec engine is called that because of special cylinder heads. So this is a Vortec V8 engine, or excuse me, Vortec V8 cylinder head. You see that kind of heart-shaped, uh, I guess that would be the heart like that, but that, that's called the, the heart-shaped uh, heart combustion chamber of a Vortec cylinder head. And this, being a V8, it's got four of those. So that's what a Vortec combustion chamber looks like. This is the head that came off the engine I just showed you. This is a marine engine, and it does not have the heart shape. This is the old style, uh, I don't think it's not the peanut style, but anyway, this is an older, less powerful cylinder head. It's a V6. It's got three, three combustion chambers, but you don't see the heart shape. So in 1996, on both the V8s and the V6s, they began using these Vortec combustion chambers. So the 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 thing is, the Vortec combustion chambers give you automatically, on a, at least on a V8. I've read it's anywhere from 30 to 35 horsepower just by bolting these heads on a small block Chevrolet. So if you build an engine, a small block Chevrolet engine, which most marine, most Merc cruisers are, um, so are the Volvo Pentas actually, you want to use a, a Vortec head as your baseline because you get, you're get you getting extra power just by bolting these on. These, these cylinder heads are much better at breathing. Um, matter of fact, I've got a couple of LS heads over there and they have the same Vortec chamber. Um, the LS the LS engine started in 1997, 96, I think 97 the Corvettes, and they they had the Vortec chamber by default from the get go. So that's why LS LS engines are much more powerful than the small block because they they rev higher and they breathe easier and uh, they're just a better design engine. But most of your marine engines from the 90, 80s, 90s, and, and 2000s are the old Gen, Gen, Gen one small block Chevrolet. So you can you can use these Vortec heads. So, so this, so what you're, what I'm saying is you want to use a Vortec head for your marine engine. So what I'm going to do, this engine is a problem. So it's a marine engine, like I said, and it had these heads on it. Well, okay, let's all go, go out and get a set of Vortec heads, V6 heads for this engine. Well, now I've got a problem. So if you flip this engine around or this cylinder head around, you can see there are one, two, three, four, five, let's see, I think there's another one too. Yeah, actually there's, let's read it again. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six bolts on this head that hold the intake on and that's times two. So there's 12 bolts total for this, four, this V6 engine. So if you have 12 bolts, you need a 12, oh, excuse me, 12 bolts. You, had, you need a 12 bolt intake to mount to these heads. That's not a Vortec intake. Vortex only have one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight for the whole engine. So Vortex only have four bolts on each side. And uh, that's how you can tell the difference between a Vortex head and the old style head. So this engine came with a 12 bolt intake, which will not bolt up to a Vortex head. So if I want to switch to Vortex V6 heads for this engine, now I've got to source a eight bolt Vortex intake to run this engine. Well, when I say intake, I'm talking about the carburetor intake. Because if you buy a 96 car engine, car or truck engine, Vortec, a Vortec V6 car engine from 96 on up, you're going to get a fuel injection intake. They, they, they didn't have a carburetor from 1996 up. They did not use carburetors. GM never used carburetors on the Vortec car or truck engine. So you're going to get a plastic fuel injection intake. It's actually called a uh, spider intake. It uses a plastic injection, uh, fuel injection system with what they call poppets. So it's, it's kind of a crap system. You can't use a marine application because the fuel system is plastic and the Coast Guard doesn't allow plastic fuel rails or fuel lines. So that intake is not allowed in a, in a boat. 
So if you, the bottom line is if you switch to a Vortec V6 cylinder head, you're gonna have to source a Vortec eight bolt intake for a carburetor to go on your Vortec cylinder heads. So that's a, probably about a three or $400 expense right there. All right, now you might have the carburetor that came on your original uh, boat engine, but it's gonna have to be rejetted because now you've got Vortec heads, which use more power. I think probably on a Vortec, on a V6, instead of having 30 horsepower, you're probably looking at 20 extra horsepower for bolting on the, uh, the Vortec heads. So that's the discussion about the heads. So be warned that if you wanna use a car or truck engine, you wanna get a 96 and later Vortec engine. I don't, I don't know why you'd build it with, with any other type uh, head. And then you're gonna to have to source a Vortec intake if you have the old style heads like this. Now, if you have a V6 and it already has the Vortec heads, you're ahead of the game. You've already got the right intake, so you just bolt it on, no problem. So you need to check your serial number of your engine. Here's the serial number on these engines. So this serial number is um, F75, F75-9978. So there's a website called marineengine.com and you can go on there and you can look up Merc Cruiser serial numbers and it'll tell you everything about this engine, at least when it was built brand new. And I, I use that all the time. I use that source all the time to try to buy parts. I'll find the Merc Cruiser part number, Google that part number, and then find other sources like Sierra or some of the other cheaper sources if, I, if, if the Merc Cruiser part number is too expensive. But the, the bottom line is you can uh, find out what kind of uh, intake you might need for if you can find a newer Say you're looking for a Vortec intake, well you can go to a 96 or later serial number or a V6 engine and find a Vortec carburetor intake and then try to find that part number cheap online or something like that. That's, that's what I do. Alright, so um, let's discuss one other aspect. So also the marine, the camshaft that comes out, so this is a marine engine and it has a marine camshaft. There's a camshaft right there. And so you want to use a marine camshaft in your rebuild. You don't want to use the car truck. Now, it doesn't say you can't. You can do that, but you probably don't have the power that you want. The marine cams are ground a little bit, just a little bit wilder than a, than a stock car or truck cam. And the reason is marine engines are built for top-end power. They're not built for, for a long period of idling uh, because they, most people running a boat are going to run it close to wide up the throttle to get where they're going. Um, so, like I say, marine cams are built uh, a little bit hotter than stock. Um, I'll one day find out what this uh, this cam part number is and see if I can find out what the grind is and uh, check it against the grind on the Vortec uh, V8 and see if it's the same grind, just two glass cylinders. So, um, so the camshaft is going to be different. So, this is a marine engine. I'm going to use the marine camshaft that came out of this engine when I built it but I'm gonna to talk to the customer about trying to use Vortec heads. Now he bought a, he bought a, uh, another core engine, a, a truck motor uh, for $50. He found it on, on the internet. So he bought a core engine for 50 bucks and some Vortec engine. So it's got Vortec cylinder heads. So now he's got, he's got a choice of two blocks and two, two sets of cylinder heads he can use. So if we can find an inexpensive Vortec uh, intake, he could switch to the Vortec heads. So that's what we're gonna to try to do. Um, but if not, we have a fallback. We can use his existing intake with his, these other heads and, and run it that way. So, um, so your camshaft's different and you're, you want to use Vortex cylinder heads. But the last difference is that if you look here, these are your, what's called core plugs and those are brass. There's some rust, but that's on the cast iron. It's not on the, the core plugs themselves. There's another one there. So anytime you build a marine engine, you want to use brass parts, bronze or brass, parts that touch the water jacket. It doesn't matter on the back of the engine, that, that camera, those two plugs there are steel, but they don't, they're not, there's not water on the other side of them, it's oil. So those, those won't rust. But you'll see there, there's a brass one right there. So any of these core plugs, there's another one. All the core plugs in the engine that are for marine use have to be swapped out to brass. The cars will have steel because cars have antifreeze, which has anti-rust properties. So you don't have to worry about rust in a car as much as you do on a boat because most of them have antifreeze. So other than that, um, when I build a marine engine, I generally, if the board's recommended, uh, let's say, if the piston says uh, bore an engine to four, it says 30,000 over, so if it's telling me to bore it to four and 30,000 over, I might add an extra half a thousand or an extra thousand, have the machinist open up just a little bit more. Because if you read the piston package, all the piston manufacturers say, 
for marine and racing applications add more clearance. Well, they don't tell you how much clearance. So, so I, what I do is um, I found the Merc Cruiser specs online and try to duplicate that. But I do, I, but even then, I add an extra half a thousand to the Merc Cruiser, Merc Cruiser spec because, in all honesty, the Merc Cruiser spec is the same as the pasture car engine spec. But, uh, who, who knew? So just want to discuss that. And uh, if you're going to take a car engine or a truck engine, convert it to a marine application, uh, this is the things you need to watch out for. You want to make sure you get a Vortec head, whether it be a V8 or a V8. No, let me back up. On the, on the V8s, the 305s, the, the, uh, the bore is not big enough to support a Vortec style chamber. So on the 305s, you have the older style chamber. The older style 305 hinge will look like that. They're not, for, even though they might say Vortec, it, it's, a, it's a 305 Vortec. It doesn't have the Vortec uh, style combustion chamber. So if you got a 305, you probably just rebuild what you got. You don't need to swap heads uh, because the Vortec heads won't fit a 305. So that's about all I want to say about uh, converting car and truck engines to boat engines. Um, summarize, you want to use Vortec heads if, you can, if at all possible. Even if it costs you an intake, it's, it's worth, probably to me, it's worth the power, the extra 20 or 30 horsepower it gives you. And then you want to make sure you use a marine cam. Don't use the car truck cam. You, you could, but you're not going to have as much power. And those are the two big issues for the power. And uh, then, then don't forget about brass, uh, brass components that touch water. And then uh, on your boards, you want to open them up just a little bit. I'd say half a thousandth, no more than a thousandth, but about a half a thousandth. Uh, larger than stock or larger than uh, the piston tells you to and then on your bearings um, I just follow marine the uh, I follow the uh, Merc Cruiser uh, Service manual specs for my bearings as long as I'm in their tolerance. I'm good All right, one other feature I forgot to mention when converting a uh, car engine to a or car truck engine to a marine engine is uh, You want to look for a block or engine after 1987 um, this block is, is after 1987, and I can tell because it has these three, these three bosses here. This one, that one, and that one. By the way, this is a 305 block. I've also got some 350s around here. They have the same bosses. So the purpose of these bosses is to, is to hold down what's called a, a spider. It's like a metal uh, device that reaches over and it holds this down. This is a lifter retainer, and it fits right here on that flat. And the spider is just a metal bar that presses down here and it keeps this thing from coming off loose or flying away. Um, and what this does is the, the lifter goes, slides in, in between here and you see the flats. So those flats, the lifter has matching flats and the flats keep the lifter from spinning. It makes sure the lifter stays like this rather than twisting in, in different directions. And the reason it can't twist is because it's got a roller on the end of it and the roller follows the cam so the roller has to be perpendicular or I guess uh, yeah it'd be perpendicular to the cam so that it rolls true um, so that's what's called a roller block and rollers are by far in a way better than the alternative the alternative was what's called a flat tappet lifter it's just a lifter with a flat surface on the bottom and I've discussed it in, this in other videos but the flat surface rides on the cam and even though it's flat and the cam the it's not really flat. The bottom of the lifter has a little bit of, it's convex like that, has a little bit of a bend or a curve to it. And the cam itself has a slope to it. The lobe doesn't, is not straight across. It's got a, a slope. And the lifter is not riding in the center of the cam. It's riding off to the side. So what happens is that as the cam lobe pushes up on the lifter, it's pushing on the outer edge of the lifter. So it tends to make the lifter spin. So you want to see the lifter spin uh, in a flat tap at cam. But in a roller lifter block, they don't spin. They, 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 it's possible for them to spin. Um, and the spin, the reason they spin is because it's sort of a combination of sliding friction and rolling friction. So it's it's not quite a full roller, but it, there is some rolling of the lifter as it spins across that lobe. That helps to reduce some of the friction and some of the wear. But even having said that, they're still notorious for wearing out, say, within 100,000 miles. Um, so flat tappets, are, uh, to me, or I, I, won't even, I won't even build a flat tappet engine. If, if the customer has a flat, some, like for example, I think this engine here came, it didn't have roller lifters, they had put standard lifters back in this engine with a flat tappet cam. And I told the customer, I said, I'm, I'm not gonna build it back with a, with a flat tappet cam because I don't wanna warrant it. Because you know? they're, they're notorious for going bad. If you don't break them in right, if you don't use the proper lubricant, and uh, 
break them into proper procedure, you can ruin them within an hour. And uh, so I, I just don't build those kind of engines. So the bottom line is you want to look for these bosses inside of, is on the V8s, so they'll have the bosses here, and that's what holds the spider, and then the spider's what holds this down to keep the roller lifters in place. And another thing about the roller systems, um, the flat tappet cams required uh, special kind of additives, the oil called, uh, I think it was zinc um, diphosphate or something, it's, it's called ZDDP, and you can buy it. Um, matter of fact, I have a bottle over there, I'll show it to you in a second, but um, if you put in, a, if you use a modern, I mean, if you use a flat tappet cam with modern oils, you have to add the ZDDP Z additive to your oil every time you make an oil change. And it's just too much hassle. Um, so if you put in a roller lifter or a roller cam, roller lifters, you don't have to worry about it. And you use the same oil you use uh, now. It doesn't matter. So, and the roller lifters are far and away a better engine. So um, you want to definitely get a roller engine. Do not build a 1987 or earlier engine or, or an engine with flat tappet roller or flat tappet uh, rockers excuse me flat tappet lifters you do not want to build that engine so i think i've covered that um let me just show you real quick Ow. the uh i think i got a bottle of Z, zzdp around here yeah this is it right here so this is this is by lucas oil products it's called zinc it's called tb zinc plus and um See where it says what it is. Racing ZDDP. I add a bottle of this to every flat tapping engine I built. Now, having said that, I just said I won't build a flat tapping engine. Some engines I don't have a choice. The uh, if you notice some, if you looked at some of my three liter videos, four cylinder, three liter engines, Mercruiser three liters, you'll notice they have flat tappet cams, or flat tappet lifters and flat tappet cams. They did not make roller lifters for that engine. So in that case, I have to use, I have to build that type of engine. But if I do, I put a bottle of that or half a bottle of that ZZDP in a four cylinder, a full bottle in a V8. And I advise my customers to put a bottle of that every time they do an oil change. Um, it's, it's a high pressure additive, makes the oil, I guess it's uh, more uh, able to absorb high, uh, high friction and high pressure situations. So um, that's what I want to say on the, the uh, roller, roller block engine or roller, roller lifter engine and make sure you build a roller engine do not build a flat tap cam v8 engine you'll be sorry uh, you'll regret it um they're generally cheaper but it's just not worth the extra savings of 50 dollars over roller over roller system and um all modern engines are roller anyway you can't you know anything after 1980 i think it's not after 1987 i don't know if it's 88 or 87 but i believe it was 87 88 was the year they started doing roller uh, roller blocks Anything after 1988, you're going to get a roller block anyway. Um, but, and that's what you need to seek if you're going to take a car or truck engine and build a marine engine out of it. Now, on the V6s, they don't have these bosses. They have, but you'll see a, a surface right here will be flat. It'll be machined flat. And there's a plastic lifter retainer that goes right across these flats and it's screwed down in two, two screw places. And if you, if you look at some of my V6 build videos, I think my Series 2, you'll see what I'm talking about. I did a special video on the failure of the plastic lifter retainer. Uh, found one that was kind of loose and was letting the lifter spin a little bit. But um, so the V6s don't have these bosses, but they do have a, a flat surface for a plastic lifter retainer. To, to, it this also keeps the lifter from spinning and it bolts down right over here on both sides. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I get a lot of questions about this and I see a lot of internet posts about people asking if, if they can take a car or truck engine and convert to marine. and I. I do it all day long. This is what I do. It's how I save. It's how I save the customer money because I take cheap car and truck cores. I get them sometimes free. I paid as much as uh, I paid as much as two hundred dollars for them and as much as zero. One time I got one free. I had to drive up. All I had to do is drive up near Atlanta and get it. Um, most of them I typically will pay anywhere from one hundred to one hundred fifty for a core, and uh, the VH will hire two hundred to three hundred dollars for a core. But uh, I buy car and truck cores all day long and rebuild them to marine specifications. So thanks for watching. If you uh, found this video helpful or useful, please subscribe to my channel.